Buenos noches. It's Tyrrell time, motherfuckers. Welcome back. Uh, two million in the bank, so things are looking a little rosier than perhaps they once were. Everyone continues to be completely pissed off. Fuck those guys, we don't need their negativity. Screw the haters. Um, you join us in time for the Great British Grand Prix, our home race. Um, now, big news has been happening. As you know, uh, Giancarlo Fisichella took pole, but was unable to hold onto it for the win in the last Grand Prix. Jordan, however, have performed a bit of a coup. They'll be using Works Mercedes-Benz power next year. That's really huge. Uh, likewise, um, Williams have signed a development deal with Bridgestone. Now, that could mean partner or Works. It's kind of unclear. Uh, Benetton and McLaren both had two cars in the top six. Ricardo Rossett's unhappy. We really don't care. Uh, Benetton and Elf will be in a partnership deal for next season. Possibly a multi-year deal. Much maligned and poorly coiffured Frenchman Emmanuel Collard will be driving for Williams. That's a surprise sizing. Um, sizing? Signing. Sorry, I was talking about his hair. Um... Meanwhile, Eddie Irvine picked up the fastest lap, despite probably being drunk. What else is going on? Arrows have picked up Intercond as a sponsor, who were a sponsor for them anyway, if I recall correctly. Ferrari have pilfered SKF from either us or Arrows, I forget who had them. McLaren signed a deal with Loctite Corporation. Minardi have signed with S. Oliver, the makers and purveyors of clothing. Uh, Prost have signed with Lycra, so will presumably be sporting some nice form-fitting leggings. Sauber have signed with FKG, and uh, AGFA or AGFA have signed with Stewart, providing free cameras one can only presume. We're not testing, no one likes us, we don't care, because we are finally making progress on our partnership deal with Mugen Honda, which is what we need to really start turning this team around. Uh, it has come at a price. We will be taking customer uh, tyres and fuels, but that should enable us to hopefully pick up at least one, ideally two, of these very fancy high-flying sponsor types. We're also uh, in discussions with Komatsu. No progress on that deal just yet, but we don't really care. Now, um, I'm not going to run any hospitality, Again, even though it's a home Grand Prix, the thought did cross my mind, but I don't really think it's going to uh, help us necessarily. What I'm going to do is complete, finally, the first stage of next year's car. We are really up against it in terms of time for finishing next year's car, so all our focus is on next year's car. Has to be. Has to be. Um, we are... At a stage, in terms of staffing and morale, that we can actually put out two spare parts per Grand Prix, which is massively helpful given that both cars are twatted. So, car we can't even get car one totally cleared up, but what we do have is a perfect car three. So we're going to move uh, Rosset into car two, as he is, and Takagi will get the perfect and unblemished um, car 3. Car 1 will now go into reserve and we will fix that up over the next races. Everything else is looking good. 20% um, of the car covered so far with no money coming in. That is a very sparse looking machine, is it not? Let's dive into some racing fun times then because why would we not? No setup points of which to speak, and still no new supplies from any of our suppliers. They just aren't bothering. Uh, seven rounds left to run doesn't give us uh, a lot of time to be receiving meaningful benefit from any updates anyway. 15 degrees dry with a very strong wind for qualifying. Good news is that it's dry because that means yet again Ricardo Rossett will be going out on rain tyres. Yep, excellent. Doesn't qualify. I know it's getting quite tiresome, me being happy about him not qualifying, but uh, he doesn't. Toro Takagi takes position 21, last of the qualifiers behind both Minardis, but again, we really don't care this season. We just don't. Great qualifying session for the Arrows, uh, 9th and 10th, and is leading Salo ahead of 
both Jordans, both Saubers, both Stuarts, both Prosts. Can't really complain about that. It's a pole though for Ferrari's Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard takes second for McLaren, and Alexander Wurtz lines up third. Company for him will be provided in the form of cheeky Irishman Eddie Irvine. 17 degrees dry, strong wind for your race. Low temperature again, so good for engine power if we had any engine power of which to speak. Uh, we will be two stopping um, Toro Takagi because it is quite hard on, on the old tyres, particularly if you're on a soft compound, a lot of high speed corners. Let's see how he does. Not great. Engine failure taking out um, Toro Takagi's Tyrrell. Uh, David Coulthard's McLaren and Heinz Halfrenson's Williams. Uh, accidents taking out Magnussen and Ralph Schumacher. And an unknown problem, stole victory from Michael Schumacher's Germany-flavoured grasp. Uh, Mika Hakkinen takes the win then in his absence for McLaren. Johnny Newhouse taking second. And Giancarlo Fisichella completes the podium for Benetton. Um, Alex Wurtz, his teammate just behind him. Eddie Irvine and Damon Hill picking up the last point. John Lacey, strong run for him as well, just outside the points. Mika Salo, last of your non-lapped runners. Uh, that shakes up the Drivers' Championship not a jot. Um, Mika Hakkinen, 33 points clear now of Michael Schumacher clearly um, going to be the driver's champion this year. Coulthard, though, locked into a pretty decent battle with him for second place. Johnny Newhouse in fourth on 22, starting to drop behind a little bit. Frenson and Fissy Keller tied for fifth. That's the spiciest battle I can see, really, uh, aside from Wurtz and Hill separated by only a point. In the constructors, McLaren just have it, don't they? Uh, ahead of Williams on 43, Ferrari three points behind, Benetton four points behind them. Jordan, Arrows and Sauber complete the list. Right, with six rounds to go, how are we doing? Well, good news is Komatsu want a three-season deal. We won't say no to that. And finally, we can sign our partnership deal with Mew and Honda. That is dope, as the kids say. No team sponsor because nobody loves us. How are we doing with our five star sponsors though? Halfway to a Patronus deal. Most that's the most promising, I think. Uh, we're gonna leave twenty percent of our guys on the Mugen Honda deal and we're gonna continually increase that until we get some um some good news from them. Uh, I'm gonna drop an extra ten percent into the PlayStation deal. We're gonna drop another 5% into the Patronus deal and we're going to drop some more into the Komatsu deal because it's actually now worth it. It's almost a million dollars and it's for three seasons so that's three million in the bank that's worthwhile. Um, we want to ideally though um, within a round or two get all our manpower onto boosting this deal as, as big as possible. Um, I think Patronus is most likely to become our title sponsor. That's good, though. They're the ones offering us the most cash Um Hopefully PlayStation also come good, and that would provide us, what, double that? So we're talking 4.6 million, 6.7 million, plus if we get Komatsu. Um, we're talking decent money, about 7 million. Um, plus the savings from the Mugen Honda deal, plus the uh, six to eight million we'll be getting from our pay drivers. It depends how readily they part with the cash, but that is definitely a significant boost. We definitely want a bit of that. Right, how's our share price? Still quite high actually, but we don't really need to do much with that. Still no testing. In the design office, uh, we will give another round. Let me do some maths here really quick. If we give them another round here, that will take us to round 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to build. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we'll do another round here and then we'll move on to the model development stage and then we'll put it in the wind tunnel for a single round and then hope to Christ that we can build two cars before the end of the season. Fortunately everything else is in order in terms of um, staffing 
uh, Prost have picked up a team sponsor contract with Benson and Hedges, Buzzing Hornets. Both our drivers are upset. What a surprise. Benetton has two cars in the top six. Now let's take a look here. McLaren have become a paying customer of Elf. That's a step down for them. Ferrari have signed a partner deal with Mercedes-Benz. Andrea Montemini will be moving to Sauber, driving for them. Jan Magnussen has been signed by McLaren. McLaren seem to be taking quite a step backwards. Uh, Stefan Sarazan is going to be driving for Stewart. Arrows, Benetton, Jordan all completing deals, as have Minardi, Sauber and Stewart. And that just leaves us and Minardi really not performing very well at all on the sponsor front. We have recorded a profit of 32 grand. That's not too bad. Um, almost in, well, it's a mid-range new car rather than a second-hand car, so we're moving up in the world slowly. Anything else for us to worry about here? Not really. Um, we do have some repair work to attempt. Let's get some spare parts built. Oh, and I need to check staffing as well. That's something worth remembering. Our efficiency is going up and up, which I like. Unfortunately, we don't have enough um, capacity within the team to... Um, ah, hold on. Cars 1 and 3 can be very nicely tidied up, actually. But we don't have enough um, capacity within the, the mechanics to actually tidy up... Um, all the cars completely despite having enough spare parts ostensibly but what we can do is get the wear a large part of the wear at least off car two and that actually puts us back into a really good position i don't think i've ever been in such a good position um with cars at tyrrell or minardi in the first season ever like i've never got to round 10 and been able to run these things so things are going rather swimmingly if i do say so myself any new staff? Yes. We're only going to be hiring the best at this point. Um, in the design office, nothing. I'm going to take on that apprentice though, because you never know. I'm going to do a quick headhunt for commercial as well. Found nobody. Lame. You guys suck. Not you guys, these guys. Um, I'll take on another very good mechanic. Might see if we can't boost our finances again a little bit, just to make sure we're not screwed when it comes to the final build of the cars, because I'm investing a little bit more in the team at this stage than I expected to. Uh, hopefully they don't all quit over the break. Right then, off to Austria, my little friends. Still not running any hospitality. We might even let Rosset qualify for this Grand Prix, you know. I know, gasps of shock and horror. Uh, the gasps also continue because... Uh, oh, he's in the wrong car. That doesn't help things, does it? No, we want Takagi in car two. There we go. Right. We have a new engine from Ford. What's the difference? A little bit more power, and it's a lot lighter. It's actually incredibly light. That's great news. Uh, both cars will be running that then. Takagi, no, you're in the wrong car. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Are we a happy little pixie now? Yes. Okay. Still going to leave him on the hard tyres though, Rosset, just so we can capitalise if things go somewhat well. 27 degrees, cloudy with a slack wind for your Austrian Grand Prix qualifying session. For the first time in uh, about half a season, we are letting both drivers attempt to qualify, and they do. Rosset out qualifying Takagi, everyone making it within 107% of pole as well. Uh, Shinji Nakano splits our cars. Meanwhile, at the 
top of the pile. Michael Schumacher takes pole position ahead of uh, McLaren of Mika Hakkinen and his teammate David Coulthard. Newhouse, Fissi, Keller, Frentzen, Wurtz, Irvine, Alacy and Deniz round out your top ten. Pretty good showings from Alacy and Deniz. And uh, the Benettons qualify quite well as well. 27 degrees, uh, slack wind, cloud cover present for your race. Um, we will be pitting just the once with Mr. Game Show Host. He'll be coming in lap 36. That leaves him 35 laps left to run. Fresh boots from the off. We're actually going to start to caggy on scrubbed tyres because I think there may be an advantage to doing it, and he'll have totally fresh, non-heat-cycled tyres um, for the remainder of the Grand Prix. Both cars finish, which is excellent. Takagi, though, very slow, three laps down alongside Shinji Nakano. Rossett has quite a good running, actually, bringing it home 13th. Obviously, no points for that, but he's uh, a lap ahead of Nakano and Takagi, and only a lap behind Barrichello and Magnussen. Eddie Irvine disqualified for reasons that we really don't know at this stage. Jean Alessi's engine gave up, as did Olivier Panis's. Hydraulic failure taking out Pedro Diniz's arrows. Jan Trulli's Prost has a brake failure. Clutch problems uh, deny Giancarlo Fisichella of more points for Benetton. And Esteban Tuero is also out. Meanwhile, up at the sharp end, David Coulthard takes the win from McLaren, getting past his teammate and Michael Schumacher to take the win there. Michael Schumacher second... Podium rounded out by Mika Hakkinen's McLaren, Johnny Newhouse, Alexander Wurtz and Damon Hill are your remaining point scorers. Damon Hill adding more to the tally for Jordan. Over in the Drivers' Championship, 67 points, Mika Hakkinen still clearly king of the hill. David Coulthard, though, has leapfrog Michael Schumacher and leads him by three points. In terms of constructors, 106 points from McLaren. Williams and Ferrari are now tied for second on 46 apiece. Benetton trailing them on 38 quite spicy this season, is it not? Okay, no bonuses y as yet. However, maybe we've had some progress on one of these deals? No? No? Okay. Fuck you then. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at how design's going. Not great, but we have to call it there and move on to the model development stage. Our efficiency has gone up though, which is at least some good news. No commercial staff, no design staff, some construction and mechanics to sign though. I am actually going to boost our mechanics with some new hires. Excellent. Um, we're going to bang out some spare parts. Our efficiency is going up and up now. Um, still can only build two, but you know, we're 50% of the way there to be able to get to three. Um, and you know, we're doing so okay on money, we made a profit of 360 grand. I know it wasn't a flyaway race, but there aren't many of those left. I think it's just Japan, actually. Um, that I may very well make a quick investment in CAD and CAM for next year. That's risky. I've never done that in the first season before with Tyrrell, but that's what we're doing. Share prices have dropped, but if I sell another 5%, that actually covers the investment we've just made, and we're still 70% majority shareholders of the team. We shouldn't have to sell any shares next year, all going well. Um, yeah, that more than covers, um, given the profit we were making plus the investments we've made, yeah, that's that's totally covered now. And we, that means we come into next season with much stronger um, design and manufacture processes. Um, and it means that once we staff up completely, we're already pre-prepared to move up to a new factory level when the time comes. Hopefully no one will be driving a Renault 5 on my watch, though. So what's going on in the news? Sauber have a team sponsorship deal with West called East in this game because tobacco sponsorship. Jordan have signed a team sponsorship deal as well. That means if memory serves, that leaves Ferrari without one. Either Ferrari or McLaren or both. That's interesting. 
Uh, any other major news? I'm just going to pick out the big news right now. Benetton have signed what seems to be a works deal with Bridgestone. Uh, Williams and Shell have gone into a works partnership as well. We are a partner of Mugen Honda, obviously important. Uh, Fastest lap went to Mika Hakkinen, no one cares. Some more sponsors being signed. Stuart have signed Danker, which is the only big money to change hands there. Um, yep, yeah, and everyone hates Peter Sauber for some reason. I don't know what he's done. His cars seem to be running about where they should be. Nevertheless, um, we will press onwards and upwards. Have we built spare parts? Yes, we have. No damage on either car, which is exciting news. We are going to dive in there with all the enthusiasm and see if we can't have another good Grand Prix. I also realised I forgot to check the Komatsu deal. Not that I'm expecting it to be signed yet, but hopefully. I, I, some people might be thinking, why am I not taking this 14% off and putting it on more important deals? It's just because it's three seasons. I might bump it down to 10%, but I, I still really need... Um, I really would like to get that deal signed. Everyone seems to be hoovering up the smaller sponsors, and quite a lot of the big ones remain in play, so it seems we've been quite lucky with how we've directed our efforts. I'm sure someone will come in and sweep these guys away. Which is why actually I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of doing one round of yeah we're going to lose a bit of money here, but I am going to do one round of hospitality because I would like to make sure everyone's still talking to us, which they seem to be, but also if we can grease the wheels a little bit, it would be very helpful to get these deals signed off very quickly. Okay, everyone's race ready. No settled points of which to speak. No new components have arrived. That's fine. Now, if you keep it on the road, Rosset, We'll let you drive again. 31 degrees, very hot, very spicy tamale. Let's see how everybody does. 22nd and 21st, so bottom of the pile, but both inside the 107% time. Not a million miles off Shin Shinji Nakano's Minardi, and within a fraction of a fraction of a second of each other, Takagi coming home ahead of Rosset. Hakkinen takes pole, uh, Fenson lines up next to him. The second row will be Schumacher ahead of Johnny Newhouse. Third row, Alexander Wurtz is Benetton ahead of Eddie Irvine's Ferrari. 31 degrees and dry for race. Um, probably going to suffer a little bit with the heat. We will one-stop Rosset, which could actually do him quite a lot of favours. He'll be starting on un uncycled uh, tyres. Takagi will get fresh boots for his first and second stop, but we'll start on heat cycled tyres from qualifying. Um, these old tyres, if people who if people are watching who used to watch F1 in the 90s, sometimes there was actually benefit to running heat cycled tyres. It wasn't like today with the high degradation tyres. Um, so I'm just experimenting with that a little bit. Uh, 14th place for Tohoro Takagi, coming home ahead of both Minardis, that's pretty good. Uh, Rosset, however, um, had an electronic failure, so clearly not to be trusted. It's somehow his fault, even though it's a failure. And Michael Schumacher disqualified. His teammate was disqualified in a previous round, so something dodgy is going on at Ferrari. That allows Giancarlo Fissi Keller to take the win for Benetton. They desperately needed that. Uh, Eddie Irvine takes second for Ferrari, and it's uh, two Benettons on the podium, with Alexander Wurtz taking third. Both Jordans in the points as well, Schumacher and Hill fifth and sixth. Edging out Mika Hakkinen's McLaren and Mika Salo's arrows, um, by a good five seconds, very close between Hakkinen and uh, Salo. He's having a very difficult season uh, after the mid-season um, 
is Mika Hakkinen. He had a very strong opening and he's still leading the drivers, but he seems to have taken his foot off the gas quite significantly. Um, not huge attrition, but we lost uh, Trulli, Coulthard, Lacey and Herbert. So but double DNF for the Saubers. Um, Hakkinen continues to lead the drivers' championship by a considerable margin, but that is getting smaller and smaller because he's been out of the points now quite a few times. Uh, where we're actually interested is the constructors because now it's uh, Benetton and Ferrari tied for seconds, Williams slipping back to third on 49 points. Um, Benetton really could make a run on second if uh, things carry on the way they're going. Right, give me some good news from Sponsorland, please. Please. No, of course not. Of course not. What about you, Kamatsu? Yes. The Kamatsu deal is signed. Three seasons. I'm going to leave 10% of the guys on there because um, maybe we can get some bonuses. That would be super. So we signed our first cash paying sponsor. Not uh, Obviously not an earth shattering deal, but it does add a little bit of colour to our uh, livery for next year and does give us uh, a little money coming in. Let's see what's going on in the news. So McLaren do have a team sponsor deal now, signing with Winfield. Giancarlo Fisichella is very excited to have won his first Grand Prix. I'm excited for him. I liked a bit of Giancarlo Fisichella. Um, Ferrari have signed a works deal with Goodyear. Benetton are uh, or oh, have fired Pat Simmons. That's surprising. Jordan. Uh, very happy to have two cars in the top six. I'm, I've just got thrown off there by Pat Simmons being fired because um, that actually means he would be available for a fraction of his usual price. But unfortunately, we've already signed everyone up for next year. I don't know why they fired him. I don't know who they've replaced him with. But that sucks um, because maybe we could have got an absolute bargain there. Strengthen our commercial team. Don't need to strengthen our mechanics anymore at this stage. What else is going on in the news? Uh, Arrows and Texaco have gone into partnership, uh, as have Prost and Bridgestone. So partner deals are being hoovered up left, right and centre. Uh, David Coulthard picked up the fastest lap and some sponsor deals have been done. Fortunately, none of them with people we're talking to. We are labelled the most ineffective manager, but actually I think we're doing quite all right, all things considered. Uh, in the design office, not great progress, but we're going to keep on here for another another round, uh, and then we will move into the wind tunnel, and that about covers us for today. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Just a, another reminder, I mean, I know you probably have heard this already today if you watch all my videos, but the Failcast F1 podcast is back on Saturday starting our 10th season, um, 10 years together, Simon and I, so a little bit emotional. Please do come by and uh, join us if you have the time and inclination. Have a bit of a chat with us about um, retro F1, current F1, uh, all the hot topics, past and present. Uh, you can come on board with me twitch.tv slash definitely zero or ride along with simon um the more active chat does tend to be over over with simon that's uh, youtube.com slash higher plane games uh, all one word uh, we really do hope to see you and uh, i wish you a very good end to your week we'll talk again on friday bye bye